Okay, without further ado, here we go. Okay, click. All right, because SEO is my religion and my law. Will never change. You may think it's strange. You can't kill SEO. It's here to stay. That's my Aussie impression. All right, we better move on here. I wasn't born to be a singer. Um, so, yeah, our company has been about 40 to 45 employees for the past six or so years. I found that that's a really good size. I uh, There was one point back in I don't know, 2013 when we were about 100 employees and uh, it was really too big to manage. Too many people. I didn't know everyone's name. The service wasn't as good. I was no longer on the front line. I found that this size of the company, I know everyone. I'm on the front line. Uh, I like the size of the company. All right, click. So just a little breakdown. Uh, the average ninja has been with us for close to nine years, which is pretty cool. Um, we have 14 of the content marketers. That's a fancy name for their uh, helping to write content and promoting it to get backlinks. Uh, we have six brand asset teams. The brand assets are creating stuff that um, uh, linkable assets, things that are either really, it's stuff that we want to go viral. So kind of the content marketers are often writing stuff, which is geared towards educators, schools, uh, orgs, uh, maybe govs, so like super highly trusted uh, old sites. And the brand asset team is trying to create things which can spread across the web and go viral. Um, so those are two of our, our biggest services. And mostly people come to us and like, hey, we want links. And it's like, all right, you know, here's a couple of ways that we can uh, do things to help build trusted links to your site. This isn't building trusted links to your um, money targeted e-commerce pages, because who's really going to link to that? Well, I'll talk a little bit about later about who will link to that and why most of that is junk. So here's just a little breakdown of the stuff. Okay. Yep, we're good on that. All right, search engine optimization. As you guys know, you wanna you wanna rank higher on the search result page. I gotta click. And you know, you can have the most amazing site in the world and the most amazing user experience uh, compared to all your competitors. Is everything amazing? But without good backlinks, your chances of ranking in Google are pretty darn slim. In fact, um, there's even been studies. Yeah, without without links, your chance of ranking is pretty slim. Um, uh, click. And then here's kind of the 20. This is from Moz, the 26 ranking factors. I think all those in green are content uh, items and all those in red are link items. So links are really, really an important factor. In case you didn't know. So the top four ranking factors are going to be number one. Click uh, your links, the quality, expertise, authority, the anchor text. Number two. Uh, the content keywords relevant accuracy and trust. Number three is the user experience. Uh, is, is it Corey relevant? Is there a pogo sticking? Which means if someone searches for a phrase in Google, let's say they search for under green widgets, and you know, let's say they click on number one within the search result, and they're just there for a second, and they go back to Google, um, and then they click on number two. It tells Google, hey, they maybe didn't have a lot of trust, they didn't find the answer, they were just there for a second, and they clicked on number two. And let's say they click on number two, and they're on that page for yeah, a whole bunch of time, you know, and then they go to a whole bunch of other pages. And you're like, oh, good, they're on the page a long time, they're going to multiple pages. But then they go back, 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 and they go back to a Google search that's, you know, the same or similar. And then they click on number three. And maybe they're on number three for 30 seconds, and then they go off to Twitter. It tells Google that, hey, number three seems like the most relevant because, you know, they ran the search, they went to number one, they were just there for a second, went back. That's a negative signal. They then clicked on number two and they were there for a bit, but they then went back to Google and clicked on number three. So they didn't find what they were looking at at number two. And But they went to number three and then, you know, they were there for 30 seconds and then they didn't go back to the Google search. And that's what that's what pogo sticking is, is, you know, what are they doing when they run the search? Are they going back to Google or a stance? It's also known as the long click. Um, a lot of people think that 
bounce rate is a really big factor to look at. But, you know, all of those are bounces. But Google doesn't tell you in your analytics which are the good bounces. You know, oh, they went off to Twitter. And which are the bad bounces? Oh, they went back to a Google search. So things to keep in mind. Um, and as your site mobile friendly. And the fourth one is the user experience. Um, you know, there's a Cori relevant. Is there Pogo sticking mobile friendly? And the fourth one is the technical, um, mobile, load speed, etc. cetera. Uh, and the core web vital update is coming up as well. All right, so those are the four main. But links are often the biggest key to rankings. <laughs> if you want to rank, it's, you know, of course you need the content. Of course you need great content. Of course you need a good user experience. Of course you need uh, good technical aspects. Um, but still without links, you're not going to rank. So it's like links are often the biggest key. Okay, click. Um, that, it's always been the biggest key uh, for Google. This was their uh, college paper they wrote in college, The Anatomy of a Large Scale a Protectual Search Engine, um, which was kind of the first search engine to be like, we're not going to trust what a site says about itself. We're not going to trust like meta tags and things like that. We're going to trust what other sites say about you and how trusted are those other sites that link to you and all of that. Okay, click. But it can be a minefield, <laughs> and you don't want to end up being click that guy. All right, click, and you don't want to get kind of too deep into it where uh, you're going to get eaten by a shark. Yeah, I should put Google's name on that, and Link Builders is the guy on the bottom. All right, click. It's dangerous. Okay, click. All right, and really these days I'm amazed at, at two things. You know, when it when it comes to link building, and I go to conferences or I talk to other SEOs about link building, there's, you know, either, usually there's one of two things. So the first thing that I'm always amazed at is that a lot of people just ignore it. They're like, ah, it's dangerous. You can get penalized. Uh, my content's so great, they're just going to naturally link to it. Or, you know, they just ignore it. You know, there, there's even some big companies out there that don't do... Um, you know, they don't even offer link building. They'll do everything else but link building. And they're like, you don't need link building. You know, they're just going to ignore it. And then the, and then kind of on the flip side, the other thing that I'm amazed at is so many people say, yeah, we get links. I have all these spreadsheets here, you know, and I've got spreadsheets of links. I got people that email me spreadsheets. You know, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a finance site. So, you know, I look for all the sites categorized as finance and people buy in from companies that like have spreadsheets spreadsheets of bloggers that can be mapped and they think like this is okay you know oh it's a it's a finance blogger and you know they're going to write a, an article on their blog about you know my my finance site and they're going to link to my uh, money pages or whatever and it's like I'll talk about that a little bit later but it's like all that stuff can be mapped like if you're getting stuff from spreadsheets no We'll talk more in detail about that. Here's kind of an example of a spreadsheet. You know, here's URLs. I luckily disguise their name. You can kind of see the categories they're in, you, number of backlinks, the Moz domain authority, majestic trust flow. Like, this is just someone's spreadsheet of stuff they sent me. And I just, but it's like, you guys see it all the time. I get emails every day. I get several emails a day. I don't even go into LinkedIn like anymore because it's like, everyone's like, all right, the guess blog works for you. It's like, you know, I'm on the receiving end where it's like, stop. No, I don't want your spam. Um, I'm not one of those sites. Okay, click. But, you know, as much as I might rag about some kind of link buildings, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> throw... Uh, throw rocks in glass houses because I've certainly been down the other road as well. You know, I get what makes things work. And there are times where, you know, you do what works. Uh, I built my, I built my house, my company on building links and click. And we'll go back in time here, you know, way back when we did link trading and click. And, you know, we did pyramid linking, you know, instead of trading, you know, what I have a whole network, you link to me here, I'll give you a link back from over there, and click. And I used to love to buy high page rank links, like, oh, that wonderful days, you know, Google would have these dances, you'd buy your high page rank link, the next month Google does its dance, you're like, woohoo, this is great. Um and, and yeah, November of 2003, Google kind of said, uh, 
uh, Jim, you really shouldn't do that. And they took a bunch of our sites and uh, kind of blew up my house. <laughs> I was like, uh -huh. So I rebuilt the house. Yep. And then, um, yep, rebuilt the house and then click. And, you know, then I'm like, I'll be clever. You know, I'm going to buy links under the radar. You know, I won't, I won't tell Google or, you know, talk about this. I'm, I'm under the radar. I'm a ninja. You know, I'm so clever. Um, and then on November 13th, 2008, you know, in fact, I was, I was so clever here. This is actually Google was paying us for link building. Uh, there used to be, this is more, this is like 12 years old. So I think we're past any statute of limitations or anything, but you know, we were, we were buying links through a company called Performix. Google bought them for like three months. Google was paying us for link building, which was pretty cool. Um, but then shortly after that, if you click, uh, yeah, they, they destroyed my house again. <laughs> so it's a wonder someone at the company was like, who, well, who are we paying for link building? <laughs> What's this? Uh, the house comes crashing. Okay. Click. All right. In fact, I had to do this post. This is back in November of 2008. And that post was like, Hey, you know, I'm Jim Boykin and I know I'm kind of known as the link buyer, the link guy, and like, you shouldn't buy links. And that was part of the only way that Google was going to forgive me or my websites. Um, is to basically come out and publicly be like, um, I don't buy, buy links anymore and neither should you. <laughs> so they kind of made me their poster child then. Uh, so basically on uh, November 13th, I'm like, all right, all right, this isn't fun having my house crash. I'm done buying links. Okay. Um, but I'm not alone in being busted for buying links. You know, it's like you'd think, you know, you'd think, you'd think some of these companies would know a little bit better. So let's click. Because it's not just me, you know, Google. Google hits itself. You know, this is what, November of 09. So this is like, this is a year after they hit me. Like, they know you shouldn't buy links. They know enough they're going to penalize Jim Boykin. But, you know, here we are a year later, and nope, Google Japan buys links. All right, let's click on the next one. Oh, here they are, caught again, 2012, Google buying links again. It's like, hey, come on, man. You know, I can't do it, but you can. Here's kind of what they would, uh, Barry Schwartz talk about it. He says, uh, you know, they were paying bloggers with $40 in Amazon gift certificates to write sponsored posts about Google Chrome. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. All right, next. And I think here's, that might be the same one or again, we'll click again. Yep, yep, here we go, we'll click. Yep, here's again. So 2018, yeah, Google was caught buying again. So it's like Google constantly, boom, boom, boom. Like, Jim, in 2008, thou shalt not buy links. But in 2009, they get busted buying links. In 2012, they get busted for buying links. 2014, 2018. It's like, so, you know, if you think, hey, we're all safe, you know, it's like there might be things that have been going on in your past or in your history that you think was safe, but, you know, isn't because even Google can make mistakes, you know, just like I made mistakes. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, so, you know, does does buying links hurt? If you actually go on to the next slide, I, I blew up some of his uh, things here. So he basically says, you know, the the link sellers website should notice a toolbar downgrade of 30 to 50%. So those sites that are selling links within the network, when the networks are mapped, they often go down in rankings. And it's a really good measurement to check. I'll, I'll show you some stuff later, but often sites that get mapped and filtered, whoosh, they go down. And then the other thing is the link, oh, actually let's go back. The link sellers website um, loses the ability to pass page rank. And this is something that a lot of newer SEOs don't know, is that a lot of sites don't pass page rank. A lot of huge sites, you know, uh, Forbes, Forbes, just to throw out an example, Forbes have been busted, busted selling links so many times, it's not funny. It's like their page rank stopped flowing back in, I don't know, 2007 maybe? And it's like, you're all like, gotta look for Forbes. It's like, come on, Google knows this stuff. They know the sites that are giving links to guest bloggers, the people that are buying this stuff, the emails that you get saying, I can get you a link from Forbes, Entrepreneur, blah, 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 like all those big sites. Google knows that. They get those emails too. They've known it for years. Those sites don't pass page rank. 
It's great if you get in them and you're like, hey, I got in the news and other people like picked it up and blah, blah, blah. But like all those sites, you think like, oh, I got all these emails about, you know, there's writers in these like, oh, those sites don't pass page rank. There used to be a site years ago called Blocked PR. And there was like a whole list of them. You could tell, you know, there's a page rank eight site. And you get a link right off the home page, and in theory, you should be a page rank seven. You wouldn't. It'd be like a page rank four. You'd be like, oh, so it was kind of the first clues of, hey, there's certain sites aren't passing page rank. So sites that Google knows that um, are, are selling links or giving out guest blog posts or they're mapped in a network inside of someone's database, those sites don't pass page rank. You'd be buying all these links thinking, woo, this is great. And, you know, the vast majority of, of those sites are not passing page rank. And um, so, yeah, so there was Penguin. So Google's like, all right, we're going to come up with this Penguin update, you know, and, and uh, uh, it had to do with links. And then later in 2016 or 17, they just rolled it into the algorithm. So it, it used to be if you had a link issue and suddenly your rankings dropped, for example, on April 24th of 2012, you'd be like, oh, my rankings dropped today. Oh, it was a penguin update. Oh, my links are bad. I have a link issue. Or, you know, if you were hit a week later, you would look and be like, okay, that's a panda update. I have an issue with my content. All that stuff's been rolled in now and not everything happens overnight. Sometimes, you know, changes can happen overnight. And sometimes what happens is changes happen slowly over time. Or Google's like, here's your current score. Uh, here's your current rank. And they say, all right, here's, here's your... Here's my hand. Here's your new rank. And, you know, slowly over time, you, my fingers, everything's backwards on here. But slowly over time, you go down. And then six months later, you're like, what happened? We used to be ranked really good. And, you know, is it your links? Is it your content? Is it, uh, is it your user experience? Is it stuff above the fold? Is it, you know, what is it? And now it's a lot harder because, as rankings go down, you have to look at so many things. because It's not like the old days where you'd be like, oh, it's links. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, so they rolled it into the core algorithm in early 17. Next. So one of the, one of the differences now is often it's more granular. Um, instead of if you're caught buying links or something, often it, it may not affect your entire site. It may affect uh, folders or pages of your site, which is something a little bit different. Okay. And so here's from uh, John Mueller with regards to devaluing these low quality links instead of publishing you, punishing you. In general, we try and figure out what kind of spammy tactics are happening here. And we say, well, let's just try to ignore this part with regards to your website. So a lot of what a lot of what Google's doing is like mapping stuff that appears to be artificial and then just not passing any of that stuff and not passing link juice from a lot of those sites as well. Okay, we'll go next. All right, and it's real time rather than regular refreshes, which means that maybe you can fix things quicker and it's no longer a site-wide issue. It can now be a page or a folder issue. Okay, next. Okay, so now you know, there's a lot of people are like, we don't want to look at keyword rankings. Keyword rankings aren't important. Well, you really should look at keyword rankings because if a keyword or a page or a folder falls in rankings, maybe you've got an issue with links going to that page. So, um, you know, unless you're like sure that, hey, throughout the entire company history, we've always been clean and no one's ever done anything, nor has any competitor tried to do anything like, um, you know, you, you should follow stuff just to be like, hey, something fell, this keyword phrase fell, maybe your page isn't meeting the user experience, maybe your content isn't as good, maybe your competitor pages are better, or maybe your links are not good that go to that page. Okay, next. White hat. Everyone wants to be white hat, right? You know, I, I, I go places and everyone's like, we only, you know, hey, Jim, you do links, right? Yeah, kind of, you know, we do content marketing. They're like, well, you know, we only want white hat link building. 
And I'm like, oh, great. You know, that's what we do. I'm always paranoid of Google coming after me. And then they follow it up with, well, here's the five phrase I, phrases I need to be number one for. And then they follow that up. You know, we need at least X amount of links per month. And then they say, make sure the domains have at least X amount of domain authority. And then they say, make sure they all come from pages about this topic. And then they say, and make sure the anchor text is blue widgets or a mix of other commercial phrases. And um, and I'm looking at that and I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're, this stuff isn't possible today unless you're willing to risk your website. You know, they, or they say, hey, I've already got the low hanging fruit. And I'm like, well, what is your low hanging fruit? And they say, well, we got directories and article syndication. We have a whole bunch of guest blog posts. We have some forum links. We paid some blog reviews, hired some link builders, got a little bit of PBNs. And I'm looking at their low hanging fruit and I'm like, that's what their low hanging fruit looks like. Yeah. And I know why people do it. It's because their boss is yelling at them. We need to be number one for this phrase or you're fired. Like, you have all this pressure as an SEO. Like, you know, so everyone bought a whole bunch of guest blog posts on guest blog post sites and uh, they're taken from an inventory of guest blog post sites. But people do it because they go to their boss. And I, and I said this earlier, like in the introduction, like it's a finance blogger. And they wrote about our product and they put a link to our, you know, page and, and the boss is like, yeah, it looks great, you know, and it's like, they don't know that financial blogger is in a spreadsheet. They're selling it to the payday loan sites. They're, they're selling links to like everyone in the world. And any one of those does something where Google's like, let's look at their network. And you're in that network as you're buying links from the same place as them. And it's like, Zzz suddenly all those links are worthless and suddenly your rankings go down. And you're like, what happened? I used to be really ranked really high for this phrase. And it's like, well, someone else who was buying the same links as you from the same place as you, you know, Google discovered it, you know, because they, they did something that caught Google's attention. And they're like, let's look at this. And then they mapped it out and you're in that network too. And, you know, they might just, they might do that. If they did a manual penalty for that other guy, they might look at it and be like, oh, uh, this guy's buying too. And guess what? You get a manual penalty as well. So it's like, you know, you think, you know, and you, you think you get this spreadsheet from someone, you know, either a company or an email or, you know, someone says, I got a list. I got a list of places you can get links. And there's all these categories. And if you're using that, you got to realize like everyone else is using it. And you know that someone stupid in there is using it where they're buying stuff from everyone and anything. And one day they're going to get busted. And one day Google's going to start mapping it. And if, if you're like, you know, you're the co-citation everywhere, or you're on the same exact sites, like Google can see, who can see, I don't know. Here's some, here's some site on here. Uh, um, yeah, you know, here's here's an example of those emails, you know, that you get, hey, you know, you can get your links from all these places. Yeah, I know, I know. So does Google. Okay, click. Um, so, you know, there's a big question is, is our guest blog post okay? Because I think 99% of SEOs that build links think Google's okay with it. You know, that guest blog post I got over on that finance site, why not? They're a finance site, you know, right? That's okay. That's what everyone thinks. Um, so someone asked John John Mueller. We all know that paying for guest blog posts is against the guidelines, but what about guest posts in general? Where no money changes hands. Because people, you know, because everyone they write to people like, I'll write a blog post for your website. I will give you great content. <laughs> and anyone on the other end that says yes, they're taking it from everyone. They're taking it from all SEOs trying to get links. You know, honestly, I don't trust bloggers. I honestly don't. I don't write to bloggers. I'll write to a school. I'll write to an EDU. I'll write to a gov. I'll write to an org. I'll write to any .com. I will not write to a blogger because like any blogger that's going to give me something like they're giving it to everyone else. Like it's, it's just, it, that's where I draw the line. I don't write to bloggers. I don't trust bloggers. So John says uh, his response to that question was, um, the part that's problematic, that's problematic is the links. If you're providing the content, the links, um, then those links shouldn't be passing signals and should have a rel sponsored rel no follow attached. <laughs> it's like, so if you're watching this video and you're like, 
guest blog posts are cool. You know, they're not. You can get penalized for getting guest blog posts. And it's easy to find because if you're getting them from places that everyone else is getting them from, that can be mapped out so easily. Next. And here's the guy at Google. He's mapping out your links and he's smiling. Ha, 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 ha. You know, they did it to me more than once. They'll do it to you. And you don't want to get a message like that. So you can go to the next one. You know, there's that message that says, like, looks like you've been buying links. You got the manual penalty. And a manual penalty is even worse because now it's like you got to remove a whole bunch. You got to do a, a disavow and, like, make sure you get enough to get out of the disavow. And in the end, you're not going to, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, you know, I'll get... You know, I'll do my disavow and I'll get back the rankings that I had. <laughs> no, no, you ranked there artificially because of those links. Once you disavow them, you know, it's not like you're going to be back to number one again. It ain't, you know, it ain't going to happen. So let's talk about a couple of things here. How do you measure the links? How do you know what's a good link or bad link? We'll talk about that for a second. And I think we're going to talk about another item here if you click as well. And the second item is... How do you get links that you don't have to worry about? So those are kind of the next two items I'm going to talk about. So let's talk about measuring the links for doing a disavow. Okay, next one. So warning, warning, da, 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 da. like, you know, this is, this is actually a Google warning. Like if you use the disavow tool incorrectly, you can hurt your site. Um, let's go on to the next link here. And a lot of people think they knew they know. So here, Marie Haynes asked, um, asked a couple of the Google employees, is it, how often do the site owners disavow links that hurt them? And the answer um, from Gary Ilias was, it's often enough that if it were me, I'd remove the disavow tool. If you don't know what you're doing, you can shoot yourself in the That's a Google employee, you know, saying, if it was up to me, I'd remove it because more people are hurting their site than helping it. And I know it's true. I know it's true because everyone, they're looking at Moz Majestic and Ahrefs scores, or one of them. And they're like, the domain authority is low. Or you're looking at some tool that says like, this is toxic and this is bright green, so this must be good. And it's like, no, stop looking at those metrics. All right, let's 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 talk about some metrics. So, you know, there is there is a chance, you know, if you look at your overall link structure, here's all of your links. and if if you do have this chunk of links, which are bad, you know, so you know you got your little pie chart and a little sliver here, and this is like bad links. You know, there is a possibility that by disavowing those, Google would, might look at it and be like, hey, you know, your percentage of really good links is much higher. But if you go to the next link on here, I think, or the next slide, um, I think Marie Haynes even asked John Mueller that. She said, hey, you know, I've, I've done some disavows and, you know, things have done better. This isn't like a penalized site and getting back to where you were. But let's go to the next slide. And so John says, yeah, you know, uh, something where if they look at everything as a whole and they see a bunch of junk and you remove that junk, that hole may do better. So it brings up the question, is it worth it to do a preventative disavow to get rid of the junk? You know, again, I'm going to say don't do a disavow. Uh, 99% of you, or how do I say, you know, there's SEOs in this room, but outside of this group, 99% of other SEOs are doing the disavow wrong. So like, don't do it. You know, other people out there, because you're going to, you're going to hurt yourself because you're looking at metrics. You know, the people, people really assume that they know how to measure a link. Let's go to the next one here. And, you know, they're using the Moz Trust HRF. They're using one of those measures, measurements, and UGG, you know what I think. So what do you use to find backlinks? You know, probably a 30 you were using Moz, and, you know, another 30 you were using Majestic, and some of you were using Ahrefs, and some of you were using Google, you know, the Google Webmaster Search Con the Search Console thing. And here's kind of the thing, you know, here's one of our internal tools. It's not public, but we pulled data from Moz, Majestic, uh, fresh, Majestic Historical, SEO Kicks, and you know, we pull down the stuff from the API with all of our tools because I don't, I don't look at any one of them. I, I look at all of it. And if you click on the next screen, you'll kind of see if uh, these are, you may not be able to see all this, but these are um, some of the backlinks to internet marketing ninjas. And if on the far right there, you'll see uh, there's Moz, Majestic, Ahrefs, and whenever you see a checkbox, it's which one of those places knew about the link. And all the popular ones, the ones on top, like they all tend to know about. But if you click on the next link, 
you'll see that as you start to go down the list, Moz knows about this one and they're the only ones that know about it. You know, Majestic and Ahrefs knows about this one and Moz doesn't. And here's here's one that only, here's a whole bunch that only Majestic knows. Here's a whole bunch that Ahrefs knows. Like they, each one of those places only have a small slice of the web, you know, like here's the internet. Here's Mazda slice, you know, here's Majestic slice. It can overlap a little bit. Here's Ahrefs, here's, you know, SEM rush. Like they all have these little tiny slices and some of it overlaps. And and people are always like, which is the best tool? Is it Mazda, Majestic or Ahrefs? And it's like, well, they all have a little slice and it's a little slice that they all have. And, you know, if you use two of them and kind of compare, you'd be like, wow, 80% of the links are different. So it's like people are, they want to use one. I get it. It would be great. It would be simple to just use one. Yeah, this is the best and it gets almost everything. But it's like, they don't. All of them just get a tiny little slice. There's a little bit of overlap between them. But, you know, if you think you're using just one of those and you're getting it all, you're not. You're not at all. Um, I see, you know, every time I run my link tool, you know, as you scroll down, there's, you know, and which one is better? I don't know. It depends on the search. Like sometimes Moz knows of more. Sometimes Majestic knows of more. Sometimes Ahrefs knows of more. Sometimes the more is a whole bunch of junk because they went down some rabbit hole and grabbed a whole bunch of like junky stuff inside of a network that doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, they're all okay. All together is a little bit better. Let's talk a little bit too about those Moz Majestic and HRF scores because so many people use them or toxic scores. Um, <clears throat> so Marcus Tober from Search Metrics came out with a study and I ended up doing some chats with him to find out more details about it. But um, he was talking about the 89% of sites that ranked seven years ago no longer rank today. And that's a huge thing. Let's let's click here. You know, and I and I kind of said, you know, how do you get the data? And he said, you know, he took all the he basically took all the sites that ranked seven years ago. And then they looked at all the sites that rank today and said, how many of these sites that rank seven years ago still rank today? And um, it was only 11%. So it's like, what happened? What happened to the other 89% of sites that used to rank? You know, well, some of them may have been redirected. Some might have gone away, but a whole bunch of them were penalized. They used to rank in Google. Google realized this is all spam. Whoosh, those sites are toast. They're still around. They don't rank for anything. Hey, let's go to the next slide here. Um, you know, let's let's go to the next one. Let's, so let's let's show some examples. So here's kind of a sheet where I just I just grabbed the chunk of backlinks. If you go to the next slide, I kind of zoomed in a little on one of them. You know, there's that outsourced outsource it to Philippines, and you know there's three thousand four hundred and three majestic domain backlinks. You're like, oh yeah, a whole bunch of backlinks to it. You know, thirty eight keywords rank in the top one hundred, but it only has. You know, and that only 38 words rank in the top 100. And the SEM rush value, which is based on how well does that site rank for commercial phrases? Um, uh, it's kind of based off of search volume, average cost per click, and how well do you rank? And they say, based on all of that, how much would you, in theory, how much would you have to spend in pay per click to get that same amount of traffic? Um, and the answer here is $17. It's the SEM rush organic value. I use that a lot. Like, have sites been toast? And, you know, you can even see on there that, like, here's how that site used to do over time. And, you know, it's been, it's been toasted. Hey, okay, let's go to the next slide. We have a handful of these. All right, you might not be able to see those. Those are too small. But if you go to the next slide, I think I kind of brought out some detail. Oh, here we go. So um, there's that uh, progressive or progardenbiz.com, a whole bunch of backlinks to it. If you click again, we'll kind of show some of the stats about here. Here's here's what it was worth over time. You can see this site is toast as well. Let's click again. But let's look at these domain authorities, you know, according to Majestic and uh, Ahrefs and Moz, you know, we got 23, 20, 42. You know, a lot of people be like, oh, I'll get a link from those. They look good. And it's like, no, you know, this site's toast. You know, here it is. There's the chart. It's toast. Okay. That, that link is not any value. Here's kind of another one is forum snits. You know, this site has 4,595 unique sites that link to it. Yeah, like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, you look at these scores on here, the Moz, Majestic, and Ahrefs scores, their domain authority scores. You have 73, 64, 63. Most people are like, I'd love to get a link on that. 
You know, here's kind of a, the specific page that links to me, those scores. You know, 61 and 57, 27. And most people will be like, yeah, you know, that's great. But let's let's click for a second here. Uh, you know, when I went to the site, I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of kind of remember this site from years ago. If you click again, I'm like, are they still selling links? And I'm like, yeah, you know, they're still selling links. So you can look down here. Here's, here's a whole bunch of people that are buying links. Talk about a great page for Google to look at. Because um, actually, if you click on the next link, I kind of remembered this site because way back in 2002, um, that link for internet marketing is for me. And man, that link used to work great. That was one of my favorite links. I used to love the Snits Network. It was great. Like homepage was a PR9. These pages were PR8s. It was like, whoa. And then one day, a few years later, it was one of those like suddenly the PR of my pages wasn't what they said it was going to be or what it should have been. And it's like, oh, they stopped passing page rank on it. In fact, Google's probably looking at that sponsored page to be like, who's buying links this month? <laughs> like every month there's people added to it. So not only is it not passing page rank, but it's probably one of those like, hey, you want a list of people that are buying links? Just go to that page. Here they are. Um, you know, and the value of that site today is a dollar. And again, 89% of sites that used to rank don't rank today. And when you're using these other tools, you're looking at high scores, but you know, these sites are, are toast. And you know, I don't believe in any of these measurements. No, none of those domain authorities, toxic spam scores. It's like, you know, the, the real thing is if there's a site, are the backlinks to that site natural? You know, are they linking out to other real trusted sites and not linking out to commercial SEO phrase stuff? You know, that's and really, really the biggest thing is, are they at networks? Okay, if you create patterns, that's what Google loves doing. They love finding patterns. I love finding patterns with my tools. It's like, yeah, you know, that's what they're doing. And if you're, you know, I think I've stressed it. If you're looking at those numbers, you know, there's toxic links or, you know, uh, Moz's Majestic or Ahrefs or, uh, you know, any of those others. And you're like, I'm going to use those scores. I just, you know, just show me the bad ones so I can disavow them. Show me the good ones. I'll keep them. You know, those links I showed you would show like bright green. Whoa, really powerful. Great site. You know, I'd be like, I'll keep those. And, you know, maybe you've got a link from, I don't know, a uh, 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 you know, a, a school website or uh, someone's hobby site where they collect rocks or something, you know, they may not have a lot of backlinks, but like the site's trusted. It's real. The people that link to it are real. And a lot of people will look at that and be like, not very powerful. It's red. Let me disavow it. And it's like, ah, oh. like, you know, you're doing your disavow wrong. I don't believe in any of those measurements. Um, here's one of our, our private tools. This is another one of our link analysis tools. Um, and the interesting thing about our link, this isn't, this isn't a public tool, but if you click again, I'll point out a couple of interesting things that we're looking at. Here's one of them called link sellers. So I don't want to upset anyone that might may or may not be listening, but like anyone that sends me an email and I get a couple a day saying, hey, Jim, I've got some links. For, you know, I, I have this network of sites. You know, here's, here's 10 examples. If you want more, just let me know. And so like I take those 10 and I put them into one of our, our tools. There's kind of another back end of this, which is the link buyers. And I'll put it in as, you know, link buyer, Bob Smith. And I'll put those 10 sites that he gave me as the example in. And then I, and then I might write back to Bob and be like, Hey Bob, I've got a finance site. I've got an education site. And I've got a, I don't know, a health site. Can you send me over even more places where I might be able to get links through you? <laughs> And Bob's always like, sure, here you go. Whoa. You know, or sometimes they'd be like, here's the whole spreadsheet. You know, there's there's 7,000 sites in my network or, you know, there's 500 sites or whatever it is, like, you know, or they'll give me stuff. And so I take those, I go into my tool, all right, seller, Bob, whoosh, I throw in the others. And what our tool does is our tool then maps out their network. Okay. You know, let's look at what our, and, and so not only we, we can map out what are the other sites within that network. Of, of the selling, but we also can look at who are the buyers and where's the power coming into to these sites? Because, you know, these bloggers didn't get power by chance. Like, it's all, it's all this kind of stuff. You know, it's like all these artificial things where all those groups of sites often are all linking to each other. And, and if you take all the sites that are in the buyers or in the suspected buyers from someone's network, I think can have a list of all the sellers. 
Uh, and maybe I'm jumping ahead here. Let's click on the next link. So when analyzing links, I, I can look at your links from the sellers. And here's kind of a, a close up of one of the parts of the tools. So I cross off the sellers names on the left hand side. Um, and what I in the right hand side says, how many known links do you have from that seller, which basically means, you know, that first seller, I have at least 400 sites of his network that are in my list, you know, maybe they sent me over a spreadsheet with 5000 URLs. And so there's 362 links to, you know, client X that are known links from this guy's network. And then I kind of have these suspected links. So whenever we map out someone's network, we also try and grab what are other links that we think are in their network. You know, they have lots of these commonalities to those. And so, you know, things like this stick out and I can be like, hey, Bob, or, you know, let's say it's, you know, someone comes to us and like, hey, Jim, can you do a link analysis? And and, and one of our questions, you know, has he ever bought links before? Have you ever worked with other people? She's like, no, 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 no. And then, you know, I run this and I get back to him. I'm like, you know, it looks very obvious that you bought links from, you know, uh, big link building George's company. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Years ago, there was some guy that did some stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, I've mapped them all out. Like, it, it's easy to see, you know. Everyone will have links from link sellers. It's kind of like having scraper links. Like everyone's going to have them. I think I need to cruise up my speed here. But when things stick out, you're definitely going to know. Um, so here's kind of the known sellers. This is kind of the back end of my tool. You can see like we have the sellers. We have how many sites we have in there. Um, and then we can analyze. And let's click on the next link. And if you're like, hey, Jim, why do you think that one of these sites is a suspected seller? And I'll say, all right. Everyone on the right hand side, like all those red dots, those are sites inside of someone's network. I know that's, we'll call it Seller Bob. I know these are sites that Seller Bob has because he sent me over a spreadsheet. Those sites on the right are linking to the sites that are in the middle. So, you know, it's like all these sites here in Bob's network are linking to these sites in the middle. The site on the far left that I took out links to the client and it links to those other sites. So it's like, chances are that site on the left is part of that network on the right. Like it's not coincidence that all those sites are linking to the sites in the middle, which are the buyers. That other site is linking to the buyers and it's, you know, linking to the client. So let's click down further. Um, and this is, this is another like an interesting part that I have is I also can map all the buyers within the network. So if I take any, you know, let's call it big link seller company, um, I also crawl all those sites that are in their network to look at who they're linking out to. And then I have a list of the top 1000 buyers within each network. We track their SEM rush value on a monthly basis. And then I have a summary, like here's all the sites in this network that fell. Here's the average fall or rise. Like I basically can see within a month when networks get, you know, whether when they're hit by Google, I got to, everything goes down in value. Uh, I can tell when people get, you know, when their sites get destroyed. Um, it's really, but I can track all the buyers of the network and we do track all the buyers and we have these summaries of the buyers and who got hit. And I've always thought of like, gee, if I ever needed some business, I could call up some people and be like, I know you just got hit by a Google penalty. I know it's because you bought links from X, Y, and Z and I can help you. Um, but we better cruise. I got seven minutes to talk about building links. Let's talk about building links. All right, let's click. We're going to go a little bit faster on this one. We're going to talk about four ways of building links, and we're going to do lots of clicking real quick. Broken link building, number one. Number two, we're going to talk about trust bait link building, and we're going to click, click here. And number three, we're going to talk about competitor link building. And number four, we're going to talk about uh, brand asset link building. Yay. All right, let's click. Broken link building. Okay, so here I'm on a web page. And on this web page, I notice on the bottom there's a broken link. There's uh, uh, there's things you can get on your computer that will kind of highlight things that are broken links. There's other ways. But like, I notice on the bottom, hey, I'm on this EDU page and there's a broken link. And so, all right, if you click. And so I go back into the Wayback Machine and say, what used to be on that link? And so I, I take what's on that Wayback Machine and if you click, I... I tell our writers that, all right, here's what used to be on there. And if you click again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell our writers, hey, I want you to write something like this. And I'll give them the link to the Wayback Machine. And I'll say, but well, make it better and cite a whole bunch more resources. And they say, okay. And then if you click on the next one. I, I then go to my 
um, client and I say, hey, we wrote this paper. I want you to publish it on your website. They publish it on their website. I then am going to write to Professor Bob. Hey, I was, you know, researching about Henry Ford and the assembly line. Saw you had a broken link. Hey, if you want to fix it, I found this other really cool link on my client site, although I'm not going to mention that, um, that talks about, you know, this topic. You should fix your broken link. Hit send or click next. And let's go back to that page. I go back to that page and I'm like, all right, there's that broken link. And I know that the professor, that this page is linking to the broken link, but I wonder if there's other pages linking to this broken link. You know, a college professor was linking to this link. Maybe other people did. And so I look and I'm like, wow, 200 other websites are linking to that broken page. Wow. All right. Maybe I should write to all 200 of those and say, hey, you know, I was doing research on whatever, saw you had a broken link, and hey, you should fix it. Here's a great link to fix it with. And if you click again, I'm going to write to Professor Larry, and I'm going to click to Professor Mo or Sendu. And if you click again, and Professor Curley, for those that know a little Mo, Larry, and Curley. All right, let's talk about trusted link building, the next topic. All right, click. Okay, so just an example, if you go back a page there, go back one click. So... We, um, there was an article we wrote, um, I think it was about like computer programming. And I just wanted to kind of show, hey, what are the kind of links we were able to get to that? I think it was like how to learn some kind of computer programming thing. And you might not be able to see the text is a little bit small, but it's like edu, edu, library, edu. They're like wonderful kind of links. Like that's, that's great stuff. Let's click again. All right. So how do you do that? Well, you know, let's say you wrote something about, I don't know, you got, you know, a computer related website. And so you write something about, uh, I don't know, computer programming for kids or basics of something. You then would search for some things in Google that are related to that and then grab the top 1000 results. And you're looking for pages that already have a bunch of links on them. And you're going to be like, all right, you know, hey, Tom, I was doing some research on the history of the automobile, came across your great page. Hey, here's another really cool page. I think you should add to that. Um, your existing page. Okay, let's click. All right, let's talk about competitor link harvesting. Now, be careful because if you're com if you're harvesting your competitor links and they have bad links, um, you can get hit. So be careful because you don't know what's in their disavow. So when uh, harvesting your competitor backlinks, you got to be really careful. All right, so here's how you do that. You identify three to ten of your competitors and then you click Jim, you can keep going a few more minutes. I hope I speak it in uh, in the name of the whole audience. This is great <laughs> stuff. So all right, I'm keep almost going. done anyway. So we're we're almost done here. So yeah, you're gonna download their backlinks from Moz, Majestic, or Ahrefs um, for the competitors, and then if you click, all right, in a sense, you're gonna do a disavow. So you're gonna kind of remove the junk. Be like, all right, these are real sites. These are real sites that were put on the web to make the web a better place. And they're not bloggers. Well, at least I'm not going to write to bloggers. And so you know, you're going to group those into categories. This is blog stuff. This is forum, news, articles, resource pages. And then you're going to make a list. Here's the ones I think I can get links from. It's not going to be blogs, forums, news, or article stuff. It's more going to be a resource pages on there. Um, and ideally, in a perfect world, you, go, you want to get a link on the page that links to competitors. Um, if not, try and get a link from that site. All right, let's talk about create brand assets for links. Woo, all right, so here's, a, this is an infographic that we created. Um, it's pretty cool, it's interactive. I think if you click on those, they make noises and stuff. It was a pretty cool thing. Um, and the interesting thing is, this is one of our tools that kind of charts the progress. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I probably did a review call with this client in December. And kind of like, well, here's how it did after, you know, a month of work or whatever, I got three backlinks, got 11,000 visitors, which is pretty cool, you know, and, and only three backlinks. I probably graded it like a C minus. I'm like, eh, didn't do as good as we thought. But check it out after five months. In March, we had over a million visitors to that page. There's no, that, that infographic, that thing I just showed in March of 2020, it got over a million visitors to that page. Wow. And then look at the number of links. You know, it went from, what, 24 links to 183 links the following month to 237 to 246. I didn't ask for any of those links. I didn't ask for one of them. I never wrote to someone and no one on our team said, hey, here's a great infographic. Um, I think you should link to it. All those links came naturally. 
I kid you not. And it's like, how did they come? You know, maybe I'm jumping ahead because we only have a few minutes, but it's like, you know, we're going to promote it. We're going to do things, you know, for something like that. Um, you know, I'll, we'll just keep going here. Here's another one we did. This one got 161 backlinks over time. All right, let's click because I, I do talk a little bit about this. Uh, yay, 161. We're going to click again. All right, so what I did is I took one client. And it was just, it was the first one on my list of clients that are getting these things called brand assets that we get. And if you click and click, I'll fill in all these numbers. So I grabbed their first, click once more. Yep, all right. So I grabbed, um, it's like their first 24 brand assets. And I just quickly wrote down how many links did these brand assets achieve so far? So like the first one got 14 links, the next one got 10, the next one got 33. Then wow, link number four, 246. That thing went viral. And you can kind of look through these numbers. I think on the third one, there's two others, 161 links and 124 links. So brand assets is something where it's like some things will go viral and take off and bring a whole bunch of backlinks and others won't. You know, others others may get, you know, I guess there's two different types of links. We looked at this. There's earned and unearned. You know, some of these links are going to be uh, things like Reddit or Mix or uh, submittal, like infographic submittal sites. I think that one was an infographic. So those are unearned and then there's going to be others. Here's another infographic we did. Let's click again on this one. Um, here's how it, how it, here's how it's doing so far. 68 neat bag leaks. I'm about to sneeze. Oh, it passed. Okay, let's click again. Um, here's some of the links that it got. So I got the Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, Distractified, Board Panda, um, plus all sorts of signals from those. Let's click again. Um, that that a particular one was actually shared by George Takai. Um, he shared it on Facebook, and on Facebook it had it had some like forty three thousand comments on his Facebook post where he shared it. Um, and then it was shared by over 37,000 people also shared it on Facebook. Now, we never wrote to George Sakai. I was like, hey, you should check this out. Like, he found it. Um, where did he find it? He might have found it in a paid ad. He might have found it in Reddit. He might have found it in Mix. He might have found it in other places. Every now and then, we'll write to a journalist. Like, if there's a study or a news thing or something that pertains to a city, here's one. Like, we did something about a... Um, I don't want to give away exactly what it was, but it had to do with, you know, cities in America and there were 10 of the best and 10 of the worst within some category. And it's like those things we wrote to journalists on the 10 best and the 10 worst and said like, hey, have you seen this thing which shows that your city is one of the best or man, your city is one of the worst. And it's like it got picked up by news stations and stuff, but let's click. Um, so, yep, yeah, let's click on this one. So it's got a handful of backlinks. Here's some of the places that they get links from. Um, that's fairly average. It also ended up on two live TV broadcasts. Yeah, we can click again. Uh, here's another one. Let's click. It's kind of the A to Z of alcohol. This one did pretty cool. Let's click. Um, some links that it got. We'll click. All right, so here's you know some of the main methods of marketing those. Uh, so advertising, places like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google. It's trying to put those things in front of as many eyes as possible. You know, there was one on like birds. You know, we may have even done Facebook ads to people that like bird groups to try and get them to see it. Um, we may have even written to some uh, bird. Uh, bird journalists or something as well, or people that write about birds to mention it, um, but not bloggers, you know, the news places if we're going to write to anyone for this stuff. Uh, Reddit, Mix, other submittal sites, trusted outreach. And here's kind of the end, you know, it's now go forth and uh, promote great content and promote it to the right eyes. Uh, don't have your links mapped by Google and uh, promote it to the right eyes. Stay away from spreadsheets. It can be mapped bad.